And here we go. We are back. We are back. We are back for another episode of Boot Camp Stories. I'm excited about this one because we haven't been prepped. Yeah, like, we, have, <laughs> we have not been prepped that much. Um, Tony Rosa, my guy from way back. Way known back. Tony for a long time. We used to work together okay. uh, and when we both were part of the government. I am still part of the government, but not DOD. And mm-hmm. Tony was one of the guys that, you know, just kind of, we kind of drifted to each other. We're both cameramen. We wanted to be better. And we just, we just haven't lost touch since. How you doing, Tony? I'm doing really well. It's a pleasure to be on the show. I'm very excited. Um, hopefully I can try not to make you spit your drink out today. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see what happens. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so, so um, tell everybody what branch you were in. Tell us, tell us about your time, your service, um, you know, when you, when you joined, when you got out. T- give us a little background. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I joined the Navy in 2012, uh, March, and I always knew that I wanted to do something in the communication field, whether it was being a reporter or a cameraman or something of that um, that kind of graft. And so, uh, I was really fortunate to, uh, join the Navy at a time when they really needed a lot of MCs, uh, which are the mass communication specialists. And so I got a a really good opportunity to, um, straight out of a school, stay at Fort Meade and, and end up going to the defense media activity, which is where I met you, Sean. Um, funny enough, that's actually, uh, I've been told one of the best places to go if you really want to get good at your job. Um, and I, I can say without a doubt, it was probably one of the best experiences I had in terms of just learning and, mm-hmm. and being around people that were incredibly good at their jobs. Um, you know, you, TJ Fryman, um, Carl, just some of the, some of the people that I, I got a chance to learn from, it was amazing. So, um, after that I left DMA sadly, and I was actually stationed aboard, um, the USS San Antonio out of, um, Norfolk, Virginia. I actually broke my leg before I got there and they basically were like, yeah, if you can't serve on a ship, you, you can't be in the Navy. So I got medically separated because I broke my leg pretty bad. No, I was going to say they, they were, I was, it wasn't like a minor break where they were going to just give you time to recover. Well, so I actually broke my leg while I was at Fort Meade and they, um, you know, looking at all the x-rays and everything, they were, saying essentially that it looked healed, but I had, I ended up having uh, further um, scans done and I went to, um, I went to Walter Reed and I had the um, folks there basically tell me that my leg was uh, significantly more damaged than um, was initially anticipated. Mind you, I was doing the PRT um, every cycle. Yeah. With a broken leg. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. And you're doing well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Stupid. (laughs) So So, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No. Yeah. So I just, it was one of those things where like, I didn't really take care of myself and, uh, I, you know, I got to my next duty station and they sent me off the ship, but I, again, was really fortunate. I ended up being, um, an assistant, Um, to the public affairs officer over at uh, Naval Air Station Oceana. So I was able to watch the Blue Angels at the Oceana Air Show. You know, I I was able to really learn a lot from some of the folks that were over there. And it was Mm -hmm. a very different experience, more public affairs, more writing. Right. Um, But it was good. It was really interesting and it was fun. And like I said, I got got to learn a lot and I got to to see the Blue Angels a lot. Yeah. That duty station also (laughs) has some of the world's greatest still photographers. Yeah. Um, if, if I, if I remember correctly, some of my good friends that, um, I served with in the Navy, uh, ended up serving with the blue angels and their photography skills just were second to none by the time they left there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. So, I'm excited about this. <laughs> yeah. So, so many very good stories, but one in particular that stands out to me is I like to call it the case of the greasy burrito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Is, this, is this a mess hall story? <laughs> I'm just going to dive into it. We're just going to go there. I'm going to feel some kind of weird. <laughs> just going to mess hall story. Yeah, so they, they, no, my, no. Sister, my sister, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know the background. My sister was in the Marine and she was, she was a, what you, <laughs> she was a, she was a, she was a chef one, in the Marines. Cooks. Killer so, she, <laughs> so let's go. Let's let's hit it. Let's hit this burrito. 
<laughs> all right. So, <laughs> all right. So as most of you know, most of your listeners know, you know, when you go to boot camp, you know, you wake up super early. In my case, I was on Westover Air Force Base, which is in Massachusetts. So I'm sitting there, you know, I get in at probably seven o'clock at night and uh, things are, things are nerve wracking. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to boot camp. This is like the biggest change in my life. You know, I'm 25 years old at the time. So, you know, I've never done anything this crazy. So I'm like, all right, cool. So you, they wake you up at four o'clock in the morning. So that whole night, I didn't really, I was so nervous. I didn't eat really that much. I didn't drink any water. So I was like, oh man, whew, I'm about to go and change my life. So I get to the airport and when they drop you off at the airport, you're in like a group of, of people. So I had a group of four people total, myself included. And we're all talking and, you know, we decided, hey, what's the last thing that we have available to us before we go away for, what is it, 12 weeks or eight uh, weeks? Well, boot camp is eight weeks. Eight weeks, um, okay. Actually, it's, it's actually nine. They don't tell you about the P week. Yeah, so nine weeks. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to be gone for like two months plus, and I'm, I need to – I'm 25 at the time, so I'm like, I'm going to eat some good food. And by good food, I mean some, some garbage that I'm never going to be able to right. have at boot camp. Exactly. And then I'm going to go have some beers because I have enough time that I could process that through my system. And, and you were old enough. Yeah, and I was Most people that don't go to boot camp are old enough to drink before they go to, to boot camp. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. but they still drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they still do it. But. <laughs> yeah, so I knew, I knew. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go. So, you know, I go to the airport um, and I start looking around and I'm thinking to myself like, oh my God, the food here is terrible. Like I, there's no way I'm going to have a, a good meal before I, I go off and basically spend eight weeks eating whatever they give me yeah. that's going to lock my system up. So I'm like, lock mm-hmm. your system up, knock the sex feel out of you, whatever they, whatever <laughs> yeah. the hell they do with the boot camp food. It's all bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I get there. There's a Chili's. I, the Chili's lights are like flashing red. I'm like, all right, let's do it, man. Screw it. I'm going, I'm going full well. So I order a cheeseburger and fries and Buffalo wings. Cause I love me some Buffalo wings. Right. And I'm like, you know what? I'm getting two beers, not just one. I'm getting the two tall boys. I'm like, okay. this, is, this is my last time. You know what I'm saying? Yep, so like, do you. I'm going, yeah. I'm, I'm going out with a flurry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I eat that, you know, everybody's having a blast. People are like, how can you be drinking a beer right now? And you know, I'm, I'm feeling froggy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, Oh, I got two beers in me, a little buzz on. I'm like, all right, cool. Life is good. So take the flight. We land in Chicago a few hours later. Mm-hmm. It's er- it's early afternoon, right? And then you get there, and the second you get off the flight, there's a petty officer waiting for you, and they're like, "Hey, are you a recruit?" And I'm like, y- "Yes, petty officer." They're like, get your ass over here! And so you're already like, "Oh shit, my So bad. they were yelling at you in the airport. In the airport, in front <laughs> that, of that that did not happen to me. <laughs> like they were already yelling at you in the airport. They already yes. knew he went to Chili's, though. They already knew he went to Chili's. <laughs> 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 so mind you mind you i was like uh okay <laughs> cool i'm not i'm not gonna say anything to this guy because like you know what what am i supposed to do what am i gonna yell at this guy and then get in trouble before i even get started so i'm like all right and you know me sean i like to say what i gotta say yep you you say what's on your mind that's why i love you <laughs> yeah so, so, so this time i was like oh man all right i'm just gonna i'm gonna go so i i realized that you're sitting there and waiting so you know you're sitting you're waiting mind you I, the whole time I was on the airplane going to Chicago, so a couple hours later, I didn't have any water or anything. And then, you know, when you fly, you get super dehydrated. Yes. So mm-hmm. I didn't have any water. So I'm like, all right, I'm dying right now. I'm sitting with all these other people. And I know we're not leaving the airport until like 10 o'clock at night. And I got there at like four. So I'm like, six hours of this. Oh my God, I'm going to die. So I raise my hand and the petty officer comes over. And I say, hey, uh, can I get some water? And he literally looks at me like I had a thousand heads. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was like the dirtiest look ever. And again, I eat hot wings with cheeseburger and fries. So I am salty. I, yep. have no, I got no fuel in me. I mean, I got no uh, water in me. So I'm dying. I got beers and beers are dehydrating. Yeah, so the two like, tall beers. Yeah, mm-hmm. two tall yeah. boys. Yep. So I'm in the back of my mind. I'm, I'm like, my mouth is lit. I look like the 
I look like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, yo, can I have, I raised my hand. I'm like, I was like, uh, excuse me, uh, sir. And he's like, I'm not a sir. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, uh, was this guy, like, was this guy a red rope? Was he a red rope? Yes. Oh, he so was he was rope. okay. So he was an RDC. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so he looks at me and he's like, what do you want? And I'm like, uh, can, can I have some water? He goes, Hey recruit, fuck you and shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and again, again, <laughs> Sean, you know me. Yeah. It took every fiber of my being not to fight this dude in the airport. Oh, <laughs> uh, and, and I can't believe what must have people been thinking about walking past you in the airport? Like that's the thing though. There was nobody in the airport near us. We had like this whole section near the USO or uh -huh. I think it was near the USO. <laughs> But there was nobody so here. The so, so did, did you guys fly into Midway or O'Hara? Midway. Midway. Oh, okay. That's oh that's the that's the least busy airport in Chicago. So, okay, there. Yep. Okay, so there might not have been that many people there. But if you'd have flew in O'Hare, people would have been like, "What the hell is going on over there?" <laughs> nah, <so laughs> they put him by the VSO where you go for help. The U the USO. The USO yeah. where you go for help. Mm -hmm. I was like you yeah. can't say anything. <laughs> you just gotta sit here and take it. Yeah, so they put us, like, way in the corner, and there's, like, 65, 70 of us, you know, just sitting there. Um, so, so you know, we're waiting there, and so he yells at me, he cusses me out. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to get in trouble. All right, so, so you know, if the time goes by, I am, like, uh, you know, that, that – Right. Like, Ugh. yeah, y yeah. So we, so we get on the bus, and the drive to RTC – uh, recruit, recruit training command is an, like an hour plus away from midway. So I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to die. No water. It feels like you're on the bus, literally your entire lifetime. And then you get there and mind you, I've had no water at this point, probably for what feels like 24 hours. So I'm, di <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> so we get to RT uh, recruit training command. And yep. This is the best part. And you all know this feeling. <laughs> The second you stop, they put the little movie on and you're all like, oh, cool. What's yeah. this movie that we're going to listen to? And then as soon as it finishes, it's like all hell breaks loose. They, they march you off the bus. They're yep. screaming at you and you're like, oh, my God. So I'm like panicking <laughs> because I have no water. I've been awake since like four in the morning. It's now uh -huh. midnight. So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to die. So I'm like, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> So I get off, you know, and you know, when you first get there, like they yell at you, you do all the in processing and all that yep, and I'm yeah. ahead because I just wanted to preface this story with how I was feeling in the moment. So right. now fast forward several hours later, you know how you get in and you march in and this is the start of P days. They basically strip you down naked and they yep. make you, you know, so you strip down naked, you're in this room, your cod piece is all hanging out. Yep. Every, every, to yep. everybody listening, everything you see in prison is pretty much what happens <laughs> when, you're in, when you're going into the boot camp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your first day of prison, your first day of boot camp look the same. Like. <laughs> yeah, so, so you know how they give you the tidy whiteies. So I get the yep. tidy whiteies and then my navy sweats, and I'm like, oh, my God. First of all, it's 1,000 degrees, so what little semblance of water that is in my body is now leaking out through my pores. Oh. So then they, they pull you into this room and you're all sitting at these like old school high school desks and they're like, all right, everybody, we're going to drug test you. Oh my God. So <laughs> when they drug test you, you got to pee in a cup. Right. And you've got nothing in you. <laughs> what beer? <laughs> what beer? <laughs> Yo, this is the, this is the, the, honestly, probably in my opinion, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. And I mean, I've run half marathons. Like right. I've done, I've done mountain races. Like right. This is, to everybody so, listening, Rose is a very active person. Very, <laughs> went, played, played soccer in college and we, we yeah. know how much running is in soccer. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's like, all right, everybody get up, get a cup and go pee in your cup. All right, so I get in line. We're doing all this, you know, you know, walking around, trying to get our bodies kind of going, get get the system going a little bit. And so, so if you can't pee, you basically do laps around this water fountain, holding your cup above your head. Right. You know, so so you're marching, and they they make you just do this little loop the whole time. So, I was the very last person in all of boot camp. There were like 200 people. 
and everybody was waiting on me. So the entire who came waiting move, for me? They wouldn't move the divisions ahead without you <laughs> peeing. <Exactly. laughs> I bet you that made you fame popular. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so here we are, right now. It's like we're we're coming up on like what? No lie, is probably twenty hours. What since I last probably like peed or anything? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh my god, I'm starting to drink all this water. And then I get this, the gargles, the, (laughs) how'd that go again? (laughs) (laughs) So what happened next? All right. So I'm getting the gargles. I'm still doing laps. I mean, this is two hours of me just doing laps with this damn cup trying to pee in it. So I'm like, Hey, uh, can, can, can I try to go pee? And he's like, yeah, yeah, go. Let's go. You know, we got shit to do. Let's go. So I go in and mind you again, they have like these weird stalls in boot camp where it's like made out of stone or like tile. And you can actually see the person. If you stand in the urinal next to the person, uh-huh. so you can literally look at the person peeing. Mm-hmm. So he had to watch me pee, which makes sense. Cause you know, they got to make sure that you don't have like a whizinator or something. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know how I'm getting that. In the <laughs> how you okay. getting that in? Right. <laughs> So, so they're watching me pee, right? And I just, I can't go. Like, I got stage fright. And mm. I'm like, oh my God, I can't pee. Like, I can't go, man. And he, he just loses it. So he's berating <laughs> me. And he, he yells me, tells me to go back in. I'm like, all right. So I go back in and everybody, there's like an audible, oh, you know, <laughs> 200 people just hating me. So I'm like, as oh, you walk God. around the track again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm walking in this classroom with the water fountain trying to pee. Another hour goes by and I finally have had enough. I'm like, listen, petty officer, I will pee in this cup for you if, and and again, remember the gargle sounds that I told you in my stomach. (laughs) So now this is an hour later. So I'm like, I'm like, please, 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 petty officer. If you let me go in there and take a shit, I will piss in this cup for you. (laughs) So, So he says to me, Okay. And I'm like, Oh, thank God. So I get in there. It's been like two hours of me walking around. I get in there. I'm like, all right. So I walk in, I'm ready to go. And this dude is staring at me eye to eye as I'm taking a shit. <laughs> he didn't let you close the door. <laughs> no, no, no. Because it was those weird stuff. Oh, that's right. There, there, are, doors. Right. there are no doors. There are no, no doors. So, and if you're sitting, I can turn to the right or left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. he's staring you in the eyes while you're trying to, while you're trying to take a dump. Yeah. And I have my, I have my, my wiener out in the cup trying to pee. <laughs> <laughs> and he's staring at me. <laughs> uh. So, so did he say anything while, while you were trying to go? Yes. Yeah, so I, I couldn't go immediately. I couldn't even, I couldn't shit. I couldn't piss. And he's staring at me and he's like, what's your fucking problem recruit? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you're, you're, you're looking at me. You're trying to go to the bathroom. <laughs> what's your so, yeah, so yeah, exactly. So I'm trying not to laugh at him because he's looking at me like all serious and I'm trying to take a shit. So, all right. So I pull it out, I like pee in the thing. But like, no poop is coming out yet. And I'm like, oh my God. He's like, you got to go. You got to go. And I'm like, well, but, but petty officer, I, st- I have to shit still. And he, he's like, fine, motherfucker. You got one wipe. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I, I literally said to him, I got, oh, what the, f-? I said, what the fuck? <laughs> I got one wipe. Seriously? And he goes, did, did you just fucking, sh- did you just yell at me? Did you just, what the fuck me, you shit brick? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting here with, with my wiener in my hand, my, my dick in my hand, and I've got poop coming out of my butt. And he's like, you got one fucking wipe, asshole. Make it count. Oh. So, so I grab the toilet paper as much as I could possibly get. Like, I had a, a, a Q-tip. Yeah, you, you want to put a mitt on, like an yeah. oven, mitt, <laughs> a oven mitt worth of toilet paper at that point. But let's remember, I've had two tall beers, buffalo wings, burgers, and fries, uh-huh. and no water. So you uh-huh. know this is not going to be pretty. No. So <laughs> I, I do the one wipe, 
And I reach for a second and he goes, absolutely not. Pull your fucking pants up and let's go. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Man. I can laugh about it now, but yo, this shit is fucking embarrassing. But anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so, so were I, you shitty? Were you walking around shitty? Oh, oh, oh! Just let me finish. So, <laughs> 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 so I take my little tidy whities I haven't worn tidy whities since I was like five years old. Right. You know? No, nobody I, had worn tidy whities until I, they got to boot camp. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was, that was done in our age. Like until we got back to boot camp. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> my, my, my pee cups got the requisite amount of pee in it. You know, it's got the perfect amount of urine in it. I pull up, pull up my, my little tidy whities to cover up my, my muddy butt. <laughs> 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 and like, so I'm like, it, First of all, I'm like mortified because this guy is staring at me doing this whole process. He knows I have like 10 pounds of poo in my undies. He knows it. <laughs> he knows it. So, so, all right. So we go through the rest of P days. You do all the things you got to do, right? Right. And uh, I'm, I've been walking around because you don't get your, the rest of your underwear and all that and like and, uh, the ability to shower for days yeah until like you and, until days. you get to your ship or, or your yeah. or they call it barracks but we call the mm -hmm. ship in rtc right yeah so i've been walking around with crusty nasty <laughs> underwear for like a week <laughs> <laughs> i felt like a baby in a diaper oh like, man <laughs> yeah, yeah so your one saving grace your one saving grace is that Absolutely, everybody smells horrible during P days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everybody is shower. Everybody stinks during P days. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, so fast forward. You know, I've been walking around with this the whole time. So fast forward, we finally get to our compartment uh, of the ship, and uh, we're like, "All right, everybody, we're doing laundry. Go shower." So we shower. We do laundry, and fast forward again when you get to um, finally do your laundry and everything, you, you have like your bag and it has your name on it. Right. And you put all of your whites in this one bag, you put all your color uh, shirts, like your Navy undershirts and things like that in the other bag. So that when you wash them, they don't get like messed up and mixed. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we finally get to do laundry. I'm finally cleaned up and we're sitting there and I had, so my uh, RDC was this guy who I can only, equivocate to he looked like apollo creed okay but he sounded like mr t oh wow he, he used to be like i'm gonna I'm a beat that ass boy i'm gonna beat it <laughs> <laughs> he was awesome one of the coolest guys i've ever met but he used to make fun of people and so come laundry day you march they dump all the laundry in the middle of the compartment and they march around <laughs> And you pick up somebody's cl uh, clothes, their right. bag, their garment mm -hmm. bag or whatever it is. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, it says, you know, Wilson. So you, you take Wilson and you march over to and Wilson's you march rack, over, right? And then you put it on his rack and you continue to march. Right. So now I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, let's get our march on. <laughs> the RDC goes into the middle and he picks out a bag and he looks, he just unzips it. <laughs> And he starts pulling the whites out and he, he pulls, he throws a sock, he throws a sock, he throws another sock and he goes with the tidy whities. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as he pulled those bitches out, those I was like, streaks. <laughs> I panicked. I panicked. <laughs> I, I caused another streak in my underwear. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna, he's gonna be like, you know, look at, look at fucking recruit Rosa. Can't even take care of himself. So, so he pulls him out and he goes, which one of y'all motherfuckers left me a greasy burrito? In the <laughs> I am like, I'm, pan I'm panicking. <laughs> he turns the garment bag over and it's some other person's name. And every ounce of me is like, yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, oh my, oh my god. god. So 
I wasn't the only person who shit their pants. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's hilarious. Oh. So yeah, that's my greasy burrito story, and I'm oh. sticking to it. <laughs> oh man, Tony, that was hilarious, man. That is like, hilarious. The, the, I love that story. The, the the thing that was that stood out to me is like you appeared to be the only person that I know that one got to boot camp in the daytime. Just usually people get there in the middle of the night. They don't want you to know where the hell you are or nothing. It's just all right. dark. Like so, that was interesting to hear. And then like so, what what so were you able to get that pair of underwear and just like. <laughs> Jettison it? Oh, oh yeah. So, so <laughs> I grabbed that underwear out of my, my rotation. I reached in the trash, pulled up all the trash, and put them on the bottom and stuffed it. <laughs> and then got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, if I remember correctly, in boot camp, you only get six pair of underwear, right? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. only get or seven, enough for each day. Mm-hmm. Something crazy like that. So mm-hmm. you really got to value those things because <laughs> – you, you're running, you're stretching, you're ripping them, like everything. You need every pair of underwear you can get in boot camp. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story, Tony. I appreciate you coming on, man. Amazing story. Thank you for coming <laughs> on and, and, and sharing your, your time with us. Um, you, that was funny, but all of us have those embarrassing stories about boot camp. Boot camp is made to break you Thanks. and make you do some embarrassing things and witness and go through those type of things but it makes you a better person and it gives you something to laugh about (laughs) you know years later yeah absolutely i i uh i look back on that time uh fondly obviously it it shapes you in a way that nothing else can um and i think you you hit the nail on the head when you said all the things that you see in a prison movie you get in boot camp, it's pretty close. <laughs> yep, pretty close. Minus the cavity search. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Minus that. All right. Well, again, we're going to wrap this up. Tony, we're right at the time. I appreciate you keeping your story um, right where we normally do. Some people go, but we don't mind that. But your nope. story was perfect with like your pacing. <laughs> Everything was just great, man. So. Thank yeah, you for thanks. coming on, and um, I'll hit you offline and get your T-shirt size, and uh, we'll get your T-shirt out to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, you know, best wishes with everything, and uh, stay safe out there. COVID-19, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, got to keep that Absolutely. safe. That's why we're doing these by Zoom right now, so we can keep the social distance going, uh, 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 thing going, and also we want to keep these stories going so that people, because people are like, how come you haven't done these? We, we missed the stories, this, that, and other, so... We can't be in the room with people like normal, but we're going to do a social distance. And thanks to things like Zoom and Google Meets, we can do this. Right. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks and, for sharing your story. And uh, <laughs> for anybody out there that wants to, has a funny boot camp story to tell or an encouraging one or one that you feel like needs to be out there, uh, just hit us up at bootcampstorytelling at gmail.com. Bootcampstorytelling at gmail.com. All right, guys. Thanks, and we will talk to you again next week.